this is an update of what happened or what did not happen uh, this early morning. Uh, as most people know, you've been keeping track of this uh, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, uh, the 16th session of the Conference of the Parties. So world, we, the world leaders have been really trying to reach agreement of uh, uh, dealing with this climate crisis that uh, many of our communities back home have been dealing with. And as indigenous peoples, you know, we've been networking here in Cancun with indigenous peoples from just about every region of the world. And, um, you know, we feel that uh, as indigenous peoples that the recognition of the, the full rights of our people need to be recognized consistent with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. So, you know, and as representatives of Indigenous Peoples and communities who are already feeling the effects of climate change, we express our outrage and disgust at the Cancun agreements that have emerged from these talks. Um, as what was exposed in the WikiLeaks climate scandal, there has been ongoing campaign of backroom deals, uh, arm twisting, and bribery leading to the COP16 talks. This agreement has no substance. It has it's yet more of what we call hot air. Uh, all they have done is agree to keep talking about climate mitigation strategies motivated by profits. Uh, unfortunately, at the end of the day, end of the negotiations, the language that uh, we were pushing was not accepted. Uh, there was a compromise uh, being push, pushed forward by governments like the United States that said, you know, we will accept language uh, on the recognition of indigenous peoples. However, they qualify it with uh, a word such as take note. So the language uh, says they will take note of, uh, of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, but that doesn't really say anything. They'll take note of it. They're not going to fully recognize it. So we're very concerned that this whole um, negotiation, the final text that was agreed upon, could end up in, as being one of the largest land grabs and one of the main mechanisms being talked about here, and that's using force as part of a carbon offset system. You know, the United Nations uh, and many of the governments uh, from European Union, United States, you're going to see a lot of positive spin saying that uh, this has been successful and that the package deal that they put together, you know, they may say it's not perfect, but at least, you know, let's move forward. Carbon markets, uh, carbon offsets, uh, unproven technologies, land grabs, uh, the, the Cancun agreement are not true agreements. Um, it's nothing but false solutions and lost opportunities for real steps to address climate change. Uh, uh, planet Earth, uh, the carbon that is being released into the air, the, the concentration of greenhouse gases that the bathtub, the bathtub of carbon is overflowing. The atmosphere of Mother Earth cannot absorb any more of this. The trees cannot absorb. Some scientists said that that you know we need four planet Earths to uh, to to be able to uh, to offset the amount of pollution that uh, that we're creating. And we don't have four planet Earths. We are unpredictable. Uh, whether it's in the southwest. Uh, of uh, the United States or whether it's in Canada and the Great Lakes, Alaska, we already know from that uh, area going eastward to uh, Greenland that the sea ice is melting a lot faster than what the scientists have predicted. Sea, sea, sea levels are going to rise. We're very concerned with the brothers and sisters who were here from the small island states. You know, they're fighting for their survival just like we are fighting for our survival. And that's why we are demanding real solutions, not these backroom deals where they're uh, you know, they're using language now um, such as you know recognition of, uh, of, the, of the forest carbon stocks. And this is a very critical issue with a lot of our uh, forest dependent communities in the global south. It's an issue with our indigenous peoples in the global south and within developing countries. 
where the trees are going to be uh, utilized as an offset, allowing the polluting industries of the north, companies, corporations like Shell Oil Company, for example, and, and, and BP, to continue business as usual. That's why we've been holding the line here, trying to um, get the, you know, the, the voices of the people who are in the front line of struggle, the front line of resisting uh, unsustainable energy policies, unsustainable climate policies at the national level. Uh, as American Indian and Alaska Natives, you know, we understand uh, a lot of the contradictions that are talked about here. Some of our Alaska Native people that are part of our network, you know, they've been, you know, trying to hold back and fight Shell Oil Company, working with the United States government on opening up the, um, the outer continental shelf of the Beaufort and the uh, Chukchi Sea in Alaska from more oil drilling. Um, you know, we have this whole uh, insanity with the increased production of. Um, of oil tar in the tar sands of northern Alberta. Now that's feeding the big infrastructure of pipelines uh, going down into the United States uh, where this oil is going to be refined. And the refineries that are located right next to uh, people of color communities, native communities. Um, behind the scene is you know the financial institutions. The World Bank, in fact, got got themselves recognized in the outcome documents as one of the, as, as the, fine, uh, as, as the implementer of this, uh, these financial, these carbon uh, market uh, deals here within the UN. So the, these carbon market that really is a commodification of the sacred. And it's, uh, some have said that's evil, it's evil. We were very inspired by our younger generation uh, who stood up here uh, to demand cli climate justice because, you know, the inaction that we're experiencing here could affect them, uh, could affect our future generation. They will be the elders in 2050. That's a report out what happened, uh, what, what's going to happen here to, uh, to the next conference of the party, 17, in Durban, South Africa. Well, we're going to organize. We're going to strengthen the knowledge of our of our tribal governments and the states. We're going to strengthen the knowledge and participation of First Nations in Canada, our Alaska Natives in Alaska, uh, both from our tribal government structures as well as within our grassroots communities. We need to get our youth involved because, again, they're the ones that are going to inherit what happens or doesn't happen in these negotiations. We, we compliment all the people that uh, were able to be part of our de delegation, our, our younger generation, our elders that were with us, and to be able to also stand in strength as a big coalition um, uh, with, our, with our alliance from the United States, grassroots for global justice.